I like the Yusuke method for starting your mains, but some say it can damage the string. Let's take a look. To start your mains using this method, you pull both center mains simultaneously. Then you clamp one string inside the frame with a machine clamp and that same string with a starting clamp outside the frame. The grommet system now is going to protect the frame from the starting clamp so you won't damage it. While you're pulling tension on two other mains, or three, depends on how many you really want to do. I'm just going to do two of them. Once you've got uh, the first couple of things started on the opposite side from the string that you first clamped, you're going to have to remove this starting clamp by pulling tension on this string again. And you can move your machine clamp back up to that end. Right here now, I can see some ghosting on this string. Let's take a little closer look. All right here's the string now and right here is where I had it clamped with this starting clamp. If I look at that through a magnifying glass, if I look at that through a magnifying glass I can't see uh, any real flattening of the string but I do see a little bit of ghosting on the string or it could be even be considered scratches. Now I'm looking at it straight down and I can still see the mooring that was uh, done by the starting clamp, but I don't see any flattening of the string. Okay, right here is where that uh, ghosting is on the string, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this string back in here, so this bend right here will be right on that mooring part. But I don't think that slight discoloring, I can't really feel anything. I believe I can on the bottom side. Uh, but I, other than that, I can't feel anything as far as uh, any scratching or whatever. But I'm going to put this in here, and this portion will be right on that bend. Here's my starting clamp with the string in just as far as I can get it in the starting clamp. As I remove the starting clamp now, I can see some ghosting on there, but I can't see any flattening of the string at all. Here's a 15L gauge string now, and if I clamp down on this string right here and I look at it, I can't see any flattening or any ghosting on this string. The other string that I was using is a clear polyester string. This is a 15L gauge uh, nylon string. If I take this starting clamp and put it all the way down in there and clamp it over and over and over again as much as possible, or quite a few times, let's just say, then uh, I can see a little bit of flattening in there uh, at about that angle, but not very much. All right, here's the real test. I'm using a 16 gauge Wilson Sensation now. If I look at this one now, I can see a lot of ghosting on there, uh, but I don't see any flattening. If I clamp it again in the bottom of the clamp and I do it over and over and over again, then on this string I can see quite a bit of flattening. Okay, But it took over and over pressure to actually do that. Here's my Wilson Sensation string again and what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp on it uh, about halfway through the clamp and I'm going to clamp it over and over and over again. Oops, got down a little bit far, far that time. Okay, when I take it out, I see a little bit of ghosting on it. I can't notice any feel of difference, and I don't see any flattening on that string. I'm going to pull 40 pounds of tension on an 18 gauge string now, and I've got a close up so you can see it a little bit better. And I've got my string about halfway through. Uh, the jaws of the clamp. You can see there it's holding very good at 40 pounds. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bump it up to 50 pounds and see what happens. Well, I tried to catch it, but couldn't quite get it. Uh, it'll hold 40 pounds, but it won't hold 50. Anytime something like that happens to you, it's a good idea to clean your clamps because anytime a string slips through a clamp, there's a lot better chance of getting uh, residue built up on the inside of that clamp than any other time. What I do is just take a pipe cleaner and isopropyl alcohol and just clean up the clamp pretty good. Some people use uh, shoe strings. I like to use uh, the pipe cleaners. Let me make sure I got it right there where the string slipped in it. While I've got this out, I may as well clean up my, my clamps themselves. While I've got my clamp clean, maybe it's a good idea to try it again at 50 pounds and see if it'll hold it this time. I'm going to try to hold on to my clamp this time. That sure won't. Got to clean it again. I'm going to put my clamp back on here and try to get it in about the same place. And rather than pulling at the normal speed, which is a fast speed, I'm going to try to adjust the speed down a little bit lower just to see what happens. Because when I'm pulling or clamping this string, uh, when I start my mains, I'm not really pulling tension against this clamp. I'm just clamping the string after I've pulled tension. So I'm going to pull 50 pounds of tension slowly and see what happens. So far what I've been able to determine is the starting clamps, especially if I put the clamp in or the string in the center of the clamp, don't cause very much damage to the string. Most of the time when you're stringing tennis rackets, if you're going to have shearing, it'll be in the head of the racket. So maybe the head of the racket is the one place where you don't want to try to put your starting clamp up here because it could damage the string a little bit. So if you don't want to use the Yusuke method, here's another method you could do. I could pull tension on four strings at a time. Now I have half reference tension on these two outside strings because that's the strings I'm pulling directly. I'll have something less than that on the center strings. I think you can actually hear the difference. Now what I could do is I could clamp this string and I'm just clamping one of these outside strings and I'm going to use a starting clamp and clamp about halfway down the string on this other, on the bottom string. It's the same string, but I'm clamping it outside the frame. Now I'm releasing tension. What I've done now is I've put a little bit of tension on this string here. It's actually less than half of the reference tension because I had some drawback. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull tension on the left center main. I've got my speed back up now to the normal speed. Now that I've pulled tension on the left center main, I'm going to clamp that. I've got an 18 gauge string here, so I'll just adjusting the clamp. I'm going to clamp that with the clamp on my right hand side. These clamps will just fit the first string there. Now I'm going to go back over to the right side of the racket and string the center main over there. Then I'll move this clamp up to the top on that right center main. Then I can go down to the bottom. I can move my clamp down. And now what I've done is I've got the first left main, the first and second right mains tension. Now I'm going back to the left main. I'll pull tension on it. I'll clamp this string. And before I remove tension, I want to remove my starting clamp. All right. I can't feel any difference on that string right there. 
I can't see anything on that string. Now what I can do is I can string my third main on the left side of the racket. Now that I've got three mains on the left side, I can switch back over to the right side of the racket, string two more mains on this side. And I'll show you another method of starting your mains out. What you could do now is you could pull tension on the two center mains, and you could clamp those strings. And the whole purpose for putting the starting clamp out here is to hold some tension on this string so that you keep the string going straight through this clamp and you keep the clamp up at the right angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release my tension but I'm holding with my hand some tension on these strings. Now I'm going to pull tension on the second left main while I'm still holding tension on this string. Then I can clamp this string and I'm good to go. Now I never pulled tension against this string and I held this clamp in the right place. I've released my tension on this string now. So now I can go and pull tension on this string. Now I can go back over to my left side and pull tension on this string again. And I never had to use a starting clamp to start my mains. If I had a racket that started with the mains at the head instead of the throat like this one does, I could be putting my starting clamp down here originally just by pulling on the two center mains. The only thing that I was trying to do away from, get away from is putting that starting clamp up here at the top because that's where you have your shearing. Uh, I think it's a good idea to know what your machine and your clamps will do and what they won't do before you ever get started. Uh, that way you don't clamp down on a string too hard or too loose and you'll end up with a, with a better product overall.